his arms and his veins. He needs, he needs to find one of those flowers, the nectar, the sweet serum that gives strength. Strength for what? He remembers the killers experimenting on them. Why? Why was he experimenting on them? He doesn't remember. He caused a lot of suffering, but he doesn't feel remorse. He doesn't even know if he should feel remorse. He doesn't feel anything but an ache in the pit of his stomach for power. He has flashes of the doctor, his screams, his agony, turning the tables on him, experimenting on him like he had done with so many others. Where? Not here. Somewhere else. Another world. All of these, these survivors, marooned from other worlds. How does he know this? He doesn't remember. He remembers the experiments. What was he trying to understand? The nectar? The serum? The right dose? The right dose. To use without hurting himself. Too late. He feels the hunger. Not for food or drink. Not for talk or fun. For a flower. A single flower. For serum. He knows the entity is watching him. He knows it. Feels it inside his bones. He doesn't want to be snatched for another trial. To suffer or cause suffering. And to what end? the great horrible mystery of it all. He wants to understand this place. He does. But he senses that to know, to really know, would drive him mad. Madness, that's what this place is. The embodiment of madness. He doesn't want to be pulled into another trial. He wants to return home. He must return home. That's why he was studying the serum. It gave him insight. Insight to what? He doesn't remember. Home. He doesn't even remember where home is. He only remembers the void. Hundreds, maybe thousands of discarded survivors, not dead, not alive, something else. Alive but dead inside, burnt, emotionless, useless to the entity. He remembers, he remembers rising from the void, finding a flower. Had this flower been his salvation? Had the flower been his way out? He falls to his knees and shouts at the abyss, and the abyss answers with silence. The silence is so deafening it hurts. He buckles over, climbs to his knees. He needs serum. He's lost. He doesn't know where he is. He sees things like tentacles reaching out for him from the fog, and he knows they're not real. None of it is. He's losing his mind if he hasn't lost it already. His eyes play tricks on him. He sees giant, nameless creatures looming over him. Doesn't matter. They're not real. None of it is. His hunger confuses him, oppresses him. He'd do anything for that feeling again anything, even return to the trials. He would. He'd rip survivors and killers apart, limb from limb, for that feeling again. He begins to mumble words, a promise. One flower. One flower. Thank <laughs> you.
He sees a flower, a single flower. He shambles through the ruins and extends his hand into a blurring image. Stem and petals disintegrate before his touch. An illusion. He looks up, and there, another flower. He rushes toward it as the ground beneath his feet shatters. Endlessly he falls through the remnants of lost and forgotten realms. He wants it to stop. He can't take the rush of hot air and the feeling of his organs rising into his mouth. He hits the ground. Ribs jut out of his chest. Jagged bones rip through his fetid skin. Where am I? What is this place? He's in a half-remembered laboratory. He sees an emblem, the company. He remembers the wars, the opium wars. He remembers the prisoners and the experiments, and his endless search for doorways into other realms. He found them, just not the way he thought he would. Warm blood pools around him as thousands of decaying prisoners and company fatigues grab and claw at him. This isn't happening. It can't be happening. You're dead. You're all dead. He closes his eyes. A collective roar and the prisoners lift him over their heads and toss his broken body into a lightless dungeon. Dark, cold, lonely. He shivers and begs, One more flower. I'll do anything. Just give me one more flower. Power is in the mind. The eye of the mind, as the mystics called it. The eye that lets us dream and visualize is more than we think it is. Much more. It is a key and it opens doors. Endless doors. And the key is a secretion. A sacred secretion like a drug to travel within the endless worlds within the swirling chaos that is infinite life. Blasphemy! Take your ideas out of this school. They belong to the devil. He takes his ideas to the company and says the secretion is better than opium. He tells them there is no experience like it, and he calls it the Dragon's Doorway. Makes the high from the poppy seem like cough syrup. He remembers the mystics, the unknown mystics, mystics who chant hymns in the hopes they will die with the right vibration. Right vibration? What does it mean to die with the right vibration? It means they believe different vibrations open different doorways to realms unknown. Death opens the doorway, and the dragon carries you away. The company is interested. How would you harvest such an opioid if it's only secreted upon death? I'll find a way. And he does. Only they find him before he can complete his life's work. He vaguely remembers being bludgeoned to death and thrown in a mass grave of corrupting bodies. And he remembers being saved by nine mystics in thick, dark tunics. Where are the nine now? 
What have they done with my research? Why did they try to stop me? Questions, so many questions. Where is my flower? In your mind, he thrusts his fingers into his sockets and tears out his eyes and digs deep into his head, searching for a flower, one flower. Even with no eyes, he can see. It doesn't make any sense. He clamors about the muck and grime. He slips and falls, and suddenly realizes he's clambering over a heap of rotting prisoners and addicts. He pushes through as the groveling men and women beg for more opioids, for tea, for syrup, for opium-laced candies. They make ridiculous promises. Take my house, my money, my children, take everything, give me more, just a little more. They sound like him. He pushes through a blur of faces he vaguely recollects. Lives ruined, shattered, destroyed. Wasn't his fault. He hears a disembodied voice. Kill them all, and a flower you will have. He stares down at the agonizing men and women, and withdraws his cane. Smashes through limbs and skulls furiously. Heads burst open like watermelons. Bones break like dry sticks. He doesn't stop until he stands atop a mountain of flesh, vomit, and gore. Where is it? Where's my flower? Find it! He falls to his knees and digs through the thick sludge of mangled humanity to search for a flower. Finds one. But just as he touches the flower, it withers away and disappears along with the remnants of his past. Talbot. My name is Talbot. He remembers his name as he stares at nine hooded figures approaching him. He stumbles over a crumbling pillar with strange symbols written in a language he half remembers. He remembers the school, the secret school, and the mystics and the arcane knowledge they were protecting. He was getting too close and he wasn't ready. Humanity wasn't ready. Knowledge without wisdom leads to self-destruction. He doesn't care about any of that. You condemned me. You all condemned me, left me to wither away. A hooded figure approaches him. You condemned yourself, Talbot. You condemned yourself. The nine hooded figures disappear as a massive dragon bursts through the ground and peers down at him with dead black eyes. The hideousness of its face transcends anything he's ever read about, seen, or imagined. An ancient evil quickened with dark life. Talbot trembles in a fog of madness that envelops him. The ancient beast lashes out at him, snatches him in its talons, and swallows him whole. Mingled saliva and acid rips through his tunic and burns his skin to the bone. With screams of agony, he slowly disintegrates in a belly full of putrid, rotting death watching his body and limbs melt into a gory, endless mass. Talbot wakens in a mass graveyard of skeletons and decaying prisoners of the company. He blinks and shakes muck from his hallowed eyes. He vomits everything in his guts and doesn't understand what's happening to him. Nothing makes sense except for his hunger. Please, I will do anything. Give me what I ask, and I am yours. Give it to me. I need it. Vines suddenly burst through the decaying bodies and surround him. Flowers grow and bloom in all their glory. Beautiful golden serum drips like honey wherever his eye can see. He approaches one slowly and is scared to touch it. He extends his hand and touches the flower, and it doesn't wither away. He touches another, and another. Nothing happens. He goes to grab the flower, but instead, the flower grabs him. Vines like tentacles burst out and wrap around him and rip through his veins. Nine hooded figures approach him with disapproving looks. Knowledge without wisdom leads to self-destruction. They inch up to him. Be careful what you wish for, Talbot. Be careful what you wish for. So to get the elephant out of the room, as you've seen in the video, I'm going to put the timestamp in the descriptions below to, for y'all to get to that point, is so the Blight, the alchemist, Talbot, Gr Talbot Grimes, was working on the doctor. He was doing experiments on the doctor. 
And if you don't know who the doctor is, he's, you know, the dude with, you know, his face all like his eyes are open by some type of restraint. I don't know what it's called. I'm not a doctor like that. So whatever. But, you know, the dude with the little weird, creepy laugh, you know, the dude that does the uh, the shock therapy stuff, him, he's done experiments on him. The Trapper, as you've seen earlier in the video through the cinematic uh, trail, not tra trailer, but, you know, cutscene and also the plague. And if you also need like further proof, if you go look at these three characters and the skins that they have for these characters, one of them is blight related. So at the end of the movie, after the post credits, you know, because everybody does post credit scenes nowadays, there will be a scene where it shows the blight, the alchemist doing either a do it experiments on said doctor or we go through his little laboratory that the entity gave to him in the realm of all where all the killers hang out while they're waiting to be chosen to go run a trial again and his little you know laboratory you'll see case files on the trapper the plague and also uh, the doctor and you'll see like doctor's real name alias the doctor and the same thing for the plague and for the trapper and it will show that hey these three people are in the universe of dead by daylight and of course the trapper is because he was the first video i ever did but that shows that okay, either the doctor is next for a movie or the plague is next for a movie and i'm going to go on and jump out there and say i'm gonna do the doctor because i have all his you know cutscenes and all his you know you know, information that I could actually do a movie based on him. Now, the reason why I don't want to do a movie on him just yet is because I'm not really a big fan of his and I'm waiting for the Plague's uh, backstory to come out because they just dropped some of her stuff like just like a week or two ago. So, but the doctor's going to be next. I've, I already have all the stuff set up for it. So I'm just all like, let me go on and put him out there. And also he'll have another case file and that case file will be, I would say the Trickster because I think the Trickster would look pretty dope in some blight type skins and all that jazz but mainly the doctor and as you going through the case files and it shows you know all the case files that you know he done worked on he'll turn around and you'll see it's the blight in you know with his long jaw and glowing eyes and all this nasty stuff that he does as he turns around as he has a syringe full of serum you'll see the doctor strapped to the board again and the doctor is like crying in pain and as he's getting ready to do it, he was like, this will only hurt a bit. And he stabs him with the syringe and injects him with the blight serum or the dragon's gate, as he calls it. And that'll be the end of the movie. And that leads us into like the doctor's movie, you know, his background and what his movie would be based on. His movie will actually be a legit, legit horror movie because this dude is beyond types of fucked up. But how the blights movie will turn out, it'll be more of a like. A lot of the movie is going to be based in the past because that's how we know. That's how we learn about who the blight is or what turned him into what he is. This flower is giving him. He's pretty much a crackhead. All right. He is pretty much. This is his cocaine. This is his marijuana. And he gets that high that just he would do anything. He would go to great. He'll do anything for this flower. Like, as you see in this, you know, this whole video that he's killed people for it. He's testing up testing it out on people he's tested it on himself he he it's just that bad but there's a difference between him and every other killer in dead by daylight him and the entity he, he kind of has a thing with the entity and you'll see a lot of the killers like the plague she has something you know a connection with the entity she believes that he is the one true god he spoke to her and now she's gonna obey her god but with the with the blight here He's working with the entity because of the fact the entity is going to bring him these flowers, the Dragon Gate flowers, what I'll call it. And he would do anything for that flower so he can, you know, get that high test on test subjects. He would do anything for it. So he will follow orders that the entity gives him so that he can get this flower. And that's pretty much what all the killers are doing. The entity is going to give them what they want, but they have to do something in return. And that is playing his little sick ass game. And. The survivor that came with this, I really don't know what to do. Mainly, most of the survivors, I don't really know what to do with because of the fact that their stories don't really intertwine with none of the killers. Some do and some don't. So with the survivors, those guys will probably be used. And like when I get done with all killers, backstories and pull up and be all like, all right, now this is the Avengers Infinity War type movie where we get to see all the survivors because all the survivors are gonna make a debut in these movies. Cause it's probably gonna be like a three-parter movie. 
you know, but I have to wait until they drop more stuff before I can even like give you a, a uh, idea of what the entity looks like. So right now the entity to me looks like a cloud with a bunch of spider legs, which is fucking weird. But anywho, the Blake story is pretty much going to be in and in and out between past and present. So think of if you ever watched uh, CW's Arrow, a lot of stuff happens at the present day and there's always some flashbacks. You know, Arrow was good for that seeing what was going on in present day and like oh this is the reason why it happened so we got to go back in time and we'll tell you why flashback same thing with this dude and as time goes on you start to see him learn i'm you know his kids he has amnesia as if you can't tell he has amnesia so over time you see him getting you know get his memory back as he uses the flower more and more and more then he finds out that oh i was part of a war an opioid war for drugs and that by the end of the movie we get to see his little sick transformation after he gets done testing himself for a final time and that's how he turns out to be the blight now it's this movie is more like body horror i mean it's still kind of be horror like body horror you know blood guts gore all that stuff it's not like oh somebody like a slasher fans like oh somebody chased me down trying to kill me and stuff no that's the only uh story that we're doing i'm still working on his but with the blight it's gonna be you know a man who's just trying to you know be happy in some form way of fashion through a drug he's trying to find his you know his happy place with the drug it's a gateway drug actually no it's not a gateway drug because this dude is like so far gone and this also will be able like a valuable lesson for people who try to find valuable lessons in all the movies they watch is that drugs are bad okay and this is what happens when you're on you know a certain drug like you know back in the day they had them little um them commercials talking about some this is this is what your brain looks like when it's on marijuana you know just throw an egg at the wall and that'll be your brain and blah 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 blah, blah. but at the end of it all the blade story is it's gonna be it's gonna be some type of horror because it's gonna be body horror but at the same time though it's just just really disgusting type horror you know get to see his body transform you get to see you know that little hole that he just climbed out of to get that flower you know it was all it was like stacked up with bones organs blood all that jazz so it's gonna be that type of psychological horror as well because when you do drugs you know you start to see things some people say they feel colors all that so psychological horror body horror um gore guts you know because he does beat up he does kill a lot of people just for that one flower and it just shows that this dude has a really serious problem but that's all i got for y'all it's not hard to really do these type of videos kind of sort of when you have all the information that you needed but it takes time so yes i'll be doing a doctor next and after the doctor I'll be doing probably the plague because by the time I'm done with the doctor's video, the plague's video, she, uh, her, all her information should be out. And I've read some of her stuff and her shit is amazing. Like her story is really good. Like really, really, really good. It's all about like false prophets, you know, gods, you know, the entity, of course, and how people get, you know, how they get all mixed up in religion to where they'll follow anything and be sheep. So other than that, guys. I love y'all. I hope y'all being safe out there, you know, taking care of yourselves. But other than that, I love y'all. Peace.